I studied at the New Brunswick College of Craft and Design and I actually went there for graphic art and design. As part of the first year, we do like seven weeks in each studio and when I did the ceramic studio, I did a complete 180 and decided to do that instead. So that's kind of where it all started. I was working in clay out of a small corner of my parents' basement and driving pots across the city to rent the, the local kiln, which we were quite lucky to have because most places don't have that. And then I moved to England. So when I was in England, I was fortunate enough to work at a ceramic studio where I was teaching workshops and one-to-one -one classes. We moved back to Canada just a few short months ago. We finished our quarantine and my wheel arrived shortly after, along with 50 boxes of clay. We're still waiting for my kiln to arrive, but it took me no time at all to turn mum and dad's basement into a temporary studio until we got a mortgage of our own. So here I am again, renting the kiln at the local art center and driving pots across St. John dealing with minor casualties along the way. I'm a ceramicist, and while I may not have the perfect studio yet, this is how I make art work. Recently, I was lucky enough to do the artist residency here at X, which has been lovely because I don't have to drive pots anywhere to fire them. I really like the plasticity of the material and how it can, it just has unlimited possibilities and how you can do so many different things. I am currently slowly setting up a more permanent studio space. So I now have my own wheel, which is really exciting. And I just recently got a kiln within the last couple of weeks. It took a while for it to get here, but it's finally here, so that's exciting. I need to sort of figure out where I'm going to set it up and I think that I need to figure out where I'd like to put it long term because I don't want to be setting it up multiple times, but studio wise that's where we're at. When I like originally moved to England, my confidence was a bit like shaken within the arts because I was like, okay, like can I really do this? But by seeing these other exhibitions and like reading about these artists that are so well known, being able to go and see exhibitions like in different countries that were like close to England, but like even in England alone, like we would get exhibitions in Cambridge and London that like I never would have had the chance to see in St. John. So that's like really incredible was being able to see work by like Picasso and Monet seeing the work in front of you and like reading about it as well like in certain exhibitions and seeing like what they would have been thinking about or like who they would have been comparing their work to or who their peers were that was all like really groundbreaking for me and seeing that they had the same doubts was like really reassuring the creative process is an interesting part of everything because it's different than my making process in the sense that it's kind of where like inspiration derives from and I'm heavily influenced by my surroundings. Naturally I'm inspired by a lot of the things that happen in my like everyday life. I think one of my biggest influences though is like the coastline and nature in general and like landscapes and that really tends to come through in my pieces especially in terms of the color palettes that I use. They're usually quite neutral and very minimalistic. Once I have an idea, I like to sketch it out before I get onto the wheel or if I'm painting, like I, I still sketch before I start. I should really be carrying a sketchbook everywhere I go because <laughs> the ideas and the inspiration are constant, so. The exploration in the color white sort of started as a conceptual project and also as an exploration. I started it because I wanted to know more about different glazes and how they would react on different clays. 
The way that we get colour in ceramics is very different than picking up a tube of paint. It all revolves around chemistry. So if I have a white glaze, it might not look the same as it would on one clay as it would another. So that was a big part of starting this process. Not long ago, while we were looking forward to enjoying our summer in Cambridge, we were excited to be living near the city centre this year and we're fortunate to be just a 10 minute cycle away. With the unpredictability of the pandemic, things have certainly taken a turn. The other thing about this project was I started to realise that I was working a lot in the colour white, so I got intrigued about that and started doing research about why that might be and trying to sort of like do like a, a self-exploration and sort of dive a little deeper and see like why I was so drawn to this colour. The psychological aspects of the colour white but also the glaze chemistry behind different tints and shades of white. The Axe One Month Artist Residency that's sponsored by RBC was a really good opportunity for me to explore different avenues and experiment with things that I otherwise wouldn't have had the time or resources to do. I was also really fortunate to be able to have a mentorship through the program as well and be able to talk to other artists that are working in the same field, which was really valuable to me. I really enjoyed being in Sussex. I like that there's so many walking trails everywhere and there's even a few spots to go for like little hikes, which is really nice. It's nice just to get out and get some fresh air and for me, like it's another source of inspiration. But it's not only the different things that we can do outside, but the community is also like really friendly as well. Like where we're staying at the All Seasons Inn, the staff were like amazing. Like for example, last night we received a bottle of wine as a Christmas present and we didn't have a corkscrew in our room. So we went over and talked to the people at the front desk to see if maybe they would be able to help us out. And not only did they give us a corkscrew, but they gave us two wine glasses to go with it. <laughs> so it's just, it just goes to show like that's just people in Sussex in this region. They're more than happy to go out of their way to help you. I think the artist residency has provided me with a lot of things that I've been looking for. One massive thing being a physical studio space that has, you know, your, your wheel, your equipment, the slab roller, a kiln, like everything you could possibly need in one space. That's been huge. But not only that, like the people here have been more than happy to answer any questions that I have and being able to talk to Matt, who's the ceramics coordinator here, has been really nice as well, just talking to other people in my field and being able to bounce ideas off of each other because when you're working out of your basement, there's nobody else around. By being able to do this one month residency here at Axe, it's really provided me the time and the space to really just sit down and work out what I want to do and work on new ideas that otherwise I wouldn't have the time to do or commitment to do it because I would be preoccupied with other projects and things that would be going on. So that's been really nice to, to be able to do that. I definitely have really enjoyed my time here and everyone here has been so wonderful. So I just wanted to thank them because they've been very welcoming as well. And I definitely recommend this residency to other ceramic artists in the region. It's been 41 days of lockdown here in England. Naturally, living abroad has caused me to miss my family often, but it's been on my mind more than ever now. Not knowing when I'll be able to see them again is difficult, especially with the borders being closed. I miss my colleagues at Bayard Art and the entire community at Kiln Cambridge and teaching from time to time at Rowan. I'm so incredibly thankful for these experiences and look forward to things going back to normal. For now, I'm taking things one day at a time. Some days I'm motivated and other days I'm not, but I've learned to accept that. <laughs>